Hi, welcome to the award-winning Ed Brown Show. Hey, we got a guy here. He goes all the way back, you know, when I came to Maryland and Prince George County. It was a lot of things weren't right then, but he, he's one of the guys that is still working with. I was surprised, you know, and that's Dennis Smith former mayor, he's been in the political system, he's dealing with the youth, and most of all now, he has a minority business organization. Dennis, welcome to the Ed Brown Show. Ed, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be here, Ed. Tell us a little bit about all those things you're, you're involved in. We, we need an hour. <laughs> that's right, that's right, yeah. <laughs> You know, that's right. to go through the, right. the things, yeah. the political things that uh, uh, occurred back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. And people, people say, hey, wait a minute. You say, yes, those things occurred. And in Prince George County, it was really tough. I had a show on WOL with Petey Green and all that, and called the Maryland Forum, and because they had no communication out here. And, mm -hmm. and then I got another, I got another a newspaper, and they call, I uh, called the Black Voice. They said, well, we're not going to buy your paper, so I called it Prince George's Fred. But these guys like this, yeah. they're the ones that help make it possible because we really had a problem and we still have a problem as far as business is concerned. And the thing I like about Dennis, he is in this minority business thing. And that's, you know, that's my thing. It said, you, you're not free unless you're economically free. That's right. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I've been in the minority business uh, mm -hmm. industry working with minority businesses since 1984, mm -hmm. since uh, Glenn Denning. Right. I was a deputy director in the Glenn Denning administration in the Minority Business Office. And then in 93, uh, Glenn Denning appointed me the director. So I, I went through, through uh, Glenn Denning and into the Wayne Curry administration. Mm -hmm. So I spent uh, nearly 20 years in Prince George's County and, uh, and working with minority businesses in the procurement area. And uh, left there, I left there and, and went to work with um, um, the federal government um, and the um, Missile Defense Agency at the Pentagon mm -hmm. until they moved to uh, Huntsville, Alabama. <laughs> right. You weren't going down there, huh? No, no. I went down to Huntsville several times, but uh, I, I wanted to stay here at home. I, yeah, I, that's I'm, what I'm saying. I guess I'm a, a homeboy, I kind of mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. uh, and I also had, I was uh, director at the um, uh, Department of Public Work, Department of Public Safety. Department of Corrections and Public Safety in the state of Maryland mm -hmm. in, their, in their minority business uh, office. Mm -hmm. And so I had local, state, and federal background in terms of minority business. And so today, uh, I, uh, with a, a grant from the uh, U.S. Department of Commerce's Minority Business Development Agency, I'm the project director of the Washington, D.C. Business Center. Oh, uh, congratulations. That's right, yeah, for the uh, um, for this right here. And, and, and this is important in, in the sense that the industry of of the Washington, D.C. area, the business industry, is government. Mm -hmm. Right. That's right. And, and the federal government is the largest buyer. Buyer. Right. That's right. They, they don't procure they, of goods and services. That's they don't right. make anything. That's it, right. It, That's right. It's always the contract. Mm -hmm. right. and then, $600 billion a year in which they spend. That's right, and that's where we live. That's, that's what, this what the industry that we live in. And, and the question is, are uh, we positioned ourselves to capitalize off that industry? Mm -hmm. You know, in, in, 19, in 1978, uh, public law 95507 that was passed by Perrin Mitchell during the Jimmy Carter administration. Yeah, I remember Perrin. Per 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 right. That's right, yeah. Right. Uh -huh. if the first black congressman in the state of Maryland came out of the 7th Congressional District in Baltimore. Right. That's right. And that law uh, put forth uh, the 8A program as we know it today. And it propelled a lot of minority businesses uh, to, to get larger shares of, of, of minority contracts. And, uh, and so uh, we here in the Washington, D.C. area have seen that industry grow and have seen minority businesses grow. Uh, uh, we in Prince George's County were the recipients of those growth and those minority business programs and things. I think that one of the one of the largest contracts that we did, one of the first contracts was uh, the Maximum Corporation, uh, a corporation back in 1986 that we in Prince George's County gave an award to in terms of our uh, IT services, information mm -hmm. technology services. And they were a federal government contractor, formerly an 8A contractor. Then one of the later contractors went to a company uh, 
uh, out of Greenbelt, a minority firm mm -hmm. owned by a guy named Cecil Barker, OAO Corporation, mm -hmm. large minority firm, sold, eventually sold, it was said he sold for about $2 billion mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, to, to a Lockheed. Significant uh, amount of money. Significant I amount mean, of money. Right. Yeah, he had, he had 5,000 employees when he sold that right. business. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, so so that's the, that's the industry that we live in, and... Uh, uh, that's where and, we and, are right and it's now. right here. It's right here. See, that's, right. Uh, uh, th that's what I try to tell people. That's why they, they're thinking in terms of uh, the FBI coming in. They're thinking in terms of hospital. Uh, some of the things that people think about when they want to move into an area with that type of uh, mm -hmm. a potential, they're thinking about safety and education. That's right. And that's right. And so one of the things that we witnessed in the 1980s is, is something that I say that we're going to also witness now with the Trump administration. There's going to be a cutback in federal employees, but there's going to be an increase in federal dollars spent. So that means the privatization of more government services. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, and, who, and, who, and who's going to get these contracts? We have to, in fact, position ourselves as minority businesses to, in fact, be, to, to be able to get these contracts. One of the things that I've seen over the, over the many years in which I've been doing this since the early 80s is that, that our relative position as minorities have not improved. Uh, you know what I mean? That's, I, a, that's a fact. I, I think off camera I talked about that. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, right. But our absolute position has improved. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is that we, can, we have more black billionaires now than ever. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Roger Smith, uh, I mean, some names of black billionaires that, that mm -hmm. you know what I mean, uh, I heard where Bob Johnson just bought uh, a firm out of uh, Texas and, you know what I mean, for about $7 billion. Mm -hmm. and so he's about a, he has about an $8 billion industry himself, you know what I mean? And so we see the, the growth in the number of black billionaires throughout. I was in Chicago last year uh, with a firm who, who's, who's, who's going to be doing $9 billion. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Nine billion. Nine billion dollars. Yeah, oh, black wow. firm. That's <laughs> right. Yeah, and uh, uh, I'm just saying that these are. Uh, 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 How do we get the young people to realize that the future is the business world? Well, I say that the, we're, the, th the thing that I've seen uh, in the last t ten years is something that's been really different. And th the, the, the talented. The talent that we have coming out of the out of the minority community mm -hmm. and the black community in particular, the engineers, right. the scientists, uh, the PhDs that we have coming out, oh, I've been very very impressed. Mm -hmm. And to be able to, in fact, take that talent and to get it and to make it um, to uh, merging it together, merging it with MB, MBAs and right. you know what I mean, that, right. uh, the masters in business administrations and things like that. I think that this is an ample time to kind of do that, and, and every family should have at least one business person. Right, and exactly. they have to pool and, and to uh, and to in fact encourage that person to in fact go into entrepreneurship. I, that's right. That's my thing. That's right. Yeah. <coughs> that's right. And, and and here in the, in the Washington <coughs> area, me. and believe me, the, the procurement, me. the procurement uh, buying mm. of goods and services is not an easy task. No. No, it's not an well, easy task. Well, uh, the system, they got to realize it's always a system, just like your organization is developing a system which they can follow. See, but they don't understand. It's, it's like a step ladder. You mm -hmm. take one step, and then w w the merger of your ability and your money are the things that carry you to the top. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And I've seen some, I've seen some real successes uh, mm -hmm. here in Prince George's County. Right. Uh, and here in the Washington, D.C. area in particular, in terms of the growth of some of our businesses, it has been really phenomenal. Uh, it's been a great experience, uh, and it's something very rewarding in terms of learning and, and watching some of the, uh, the gains uh, of many of these businesses. Well, wh what do you think about, uh, you know, uh, I was in discussion with a few people, and I, w when I was coming up, uh, they had vocational schools. Now they don't have vocational schools for the young people. People, uh, the blue collar industry, uh, we we seem to have turned the young people away from it. But uh, hey, if you don't believe blue collar industry is great, just call one for your television or any maintenance on your house, your electricity, yeah, uh, your anything, mm -hmm. a anything concerning the blue collar industry. And right now, the fact is, they don't. 
vocational. They used to have shops. They used to have metal shop, all kinds of shops. Uh, but now in school, what do you think about that approach? Well, I, I, uh, because I, it creates it, jobs. It's like, yeah, you know, many, everybody can't go to college. No, many of my businesses right now are very successful businesses mm -hmm. and that, that I could name to you, and I'd be glad to bring some of them on your show. Okay. That, uh, in fact, uh, uh, in terms of their formal education, they don't have a lot of formal education, but I'm telling you that yeah. they're running twenty million dollar firms. Right, right. And, and but it's about them understanding that what you need to be able to build is a team. That's it. You build a team, and around that team, uh, you you uh, knowledge and 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 technical help and that kind of stuff. That's on the market to buy. Yeah. Yeah, you buy that. Right. That's right. Nobody ever said that Donald Trump was smart. He can buy that. Mm -hmm. You can mm -hmm. go out there and buy that. Mm -hmm. But he's been an entrepreneur. He's been willing to take the risk. Right. That's right. And that's the thing is these guys who are out there willing to take the risk understand some of the, what they don't have. Right. And they're able to, in fact, go out there and buy those particular services that are out there. And that means talent. And, and that means, and, and right now, oh, I've been, I've been very impressed with the number of engineers out there, the number of professional IT persons, and, uh, uh, and, and, and myself. But, but how, how, how do you merge them together into a, a force that can be reckoned with by the business world? What, one of the things that, that we have in, in terms of the, uh, our business center is what we call a strategic, facili strategic facilitation of businesses, mm -hmm. which, which in fact, we take one business and we take another business and we bring them together. Yeah. We team them together. Number one, it, it helps to uh, eliminate risk. It helps to build the capacity. And, uh, um, and, and you have to, in fact, oftentimes bring a lawyer into the mix yeah, to, in right. fact, develop the, uh, legalize it. That's right. That's right. right. To de to develop the uh, the whole transaction, mm -hmm. uh huh, and to make it tight, uh -huh. and so uh, uh, so you know you have to in fact recognize that you're going to have to partner. You're mm -hmm. going to have to you're right. develop strategic, strategic, uh, strategic planning. planning. That's yeah. right. To get yeah. right coming together. Yeah. And yeah. and and th I think that's one of the weakness. Everyone, uh, well, they want to be an individual. But uh, you find in the business world, if you're going to be successful, you have to merge with other people to not only get contact, but mm -hmm. also to get contracts. Absolutely. <laughs> That's right. You know, because what happens is that if you get the, the bid and everything, you need people to do the work. Yeah. And by That's you, right. the talent, you need talent to accomplish your goal. And, and, that, and that's one of the things that, that probably what you'll see, uh, what you saw in the Reagan administration, and I predict that you'll see in this administration, is that your, your contracts are going to be so huge yeah. that uh, in order for you to, in fact, uh, be able to, in fact, bid on them or submit a proposal on them, you're going to have to team. Right. You're going to have to that, join, that concept, join and come together. But, but a, a lot of youngsters, they, they get the computer and they, they want to develop an app and they want to do things uh, singularly, you know. They, but see, that's, <coughs> that doesn't work. Yeah. You go out and you network <coughs> and you meet people. You meet people. That's right. And you, and you have people assigned and you set up your business so that anything that that contract uh, ask for you have someone in your group that can do it absolutely absolutely yeah so we uh, so it's uh, um, I have uh, three persons in my office two other consultants that I work with and an admin person uh, and and that's what we do all day we are out there looking for opportunities mm -hmm. we are out there in fact uh, bringing together some of our clients and teaming them putting them together yeah that's right Right. And and I work with the uh, uh, under the banner of the Capital Resource Minor the Capital Resource Minority Supply Development Council, mm -hmm. Capital Regional Minority Supply Development Council, and uh, uh, and Sharon Pender is the director of the mm -hmm. uh, she's the CEO and president of the Capital Region. We can region. have her on the show. Well, we need to. Okay. That's right. The Capital well, Region Minority. You set that up for me. <laughs> I will. I certainly will. The Capital Regional Minority Supply Development Council. Mm -hmm. And uh, and they, in fact, interact with large corporations. Mm -hmm. The Northwood Grumman, the Grummans, and the Lockheeds. Right. The B, that's right. That's right. And those, and those corporations that are, in fact, uh, out there with large contracts as well. Yeah. Yeah. But we have, but, but I have, we have a very, I have a very impressive, uh, group of clients that I work with every day mm -hmm. in terms of mm -hmm. minority businesses. Now, now wh 
what kind of program they have for mentoring young people. I believe strongly in that because what it does, it's a hands-on situation mm -hmm. that and gives that young person exposure. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the federal government has two, two, two mentoring programs, one coming out of, out of the Small Business Administration and one coming out of the Department of Defense. Mm -hmm. Department of Defense actually pays the, uh, the, general, the, uh, the general, the large contractor for assistance in mentoring the, right. the minority business, right, and uh, um, um, be it with you at Lockheed or with uh, Northwood Grumman or with some other type of large f firm such as that. Uh, but we have to, in fact, uh, uh, take advantage of some of those mentoring avenues. Yeah, matter be of fact, I because even that because that opens up the employment for the young people. They have a future when they see something like that, or either they have exposure to it. Because once they have exposure to it. What they do, they that increases their thoughts and, and, and activity, mm -hmm. and they want to get involved with it. Absolutely. See, but right now, the young people say, "Hey, I go four years, I, and I come out, and I have a degree, and I have a house note too, you know, with the student loan, and then there's no job in my field. That's I right. have to end up going to fast food mm -hmm. to 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 work. Right. I mean, uh, that's that's not a future." And right now, that's what's happening with student loans. They're, they're killing the young people. Oh, yeah, when they come out of school, they, uh, they got, like I say, they got a house note. And mentoring, I, I think mentoring is one of the major uh, answers to that because it gives that uh, a hands-on opportunity to that young person mm -hmm. to really find out about that industry. Yeah, I, I, I use this. I use this expression with my uh, grandson. Well, he wanted to be a veterinarian. A veterinarian, mm -hmm. you know. So my son got a mentoring veterinarian. Got him a, a job on the weekend and, and with a veterinarian, and he worked two or three months, he said, no, I don't think I want to be a veterinarian after he got that exposure. Right. But he had all that thoughts about it. But mentoring is the key. If we can get programs, the companies, to mentor the young people that are in school, and when I say in school, I'm talking about uh, high school, That's from right. high school up, get mm -hmm. them to mentor, get involved. And I think that'll solve a lot of financial problems oh, no doubt about everybody. It. But I was glad to hear that about your, about, your, about your grandson, though, because the thing is, the thing that he learned a, a lot about is the biology. Yeah, right. You see, and, and to have that broad exposure allows you to be more ready for the marketplace. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I mean? So he's in the health care, the biology, the understanding of that aspect of science. Right. That's right. And, and to prepare himself for uh, the, the, ta the technology that's associated necessary. with that. That's right. right. Yeah. So that's a, that thing, that's, a, that's a very important element. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if we get private industry to really uh, uh, get involved in, in the mentoring aspects of it, I'm thinking of the future, you know, young people, uh, so that they do not, because I, I feel it, the way education go, it, I mean, it, it, uh, it, uh, a youngster, if he doesn't have the money, so what is he going to do? Yeah. You know? He, Ed education is still, ed education is still key. Yeah. Education is still key. And the thing oh, is yeah. that. It's and, key. And, and, and to the extent that those who are, who, who take that college route and to come back to our community and to work with that young man who you mm. said that didn't go to college, mm. who's now in that, that vocational training, getting yeah. that blue collar help. Right. And for them to, in fact, team up is team up. very important That's because, uh, um, because somebody has to write that proposal. Right. Somebody has to put together that, that language that is uh, transferable. Right. You know what I mean? Right. I, I've, been, I've been teaching down at the adjunct at the community college, uh, Prince George's Community College, since 1986 now. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I have a class in both uh, proposal writing and in doing business with the government, state, local, and federal. Excellent. Uh -huh. that, that, right. and see, that's the type of exposure they need. Okay, they have it in a, a college uh, level, but they should have that in the high school level because most of the youngsters, mm -hmm. they don't know. Yeah. They don't realize. And I think the uh, uh, junior college level is a great way because youngsters don't have exposure. They're not getting mentored. They don't have the exposure, and they don't know what they want to do. The, the, the uh, uh, community college gives them an opportunity to 
hey, while they're thinking about it, uh, they're not taking courses that they won't be able to get a degree in because, boy, they get one degree from the community college and then they get that exposure and that solidifies what they want to do in the future. Mm -hmm. yeah, th there's so many aspects to a business. Yeah. Even with the guy who came out of high school who goes to a, tr uh, a trade shop and say he gets a trade in uh, electrical. Yeah. That's right. He's Electrician, still, he, that's right. $50 an hour, you know. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> that's right. He still has to, in <laughs> fact, prepare yeah. a proposal. Right. He still has to, in fact, understand accounting. He has to understand the legal aspects of his business. Exactly. He needs to know insurance and the risk associated with aspects of his business. Right. So there's, in, in uh, uh, a part of his understanding is a whole industry, different industries under him mm. that complement and that's going to add to the success of his business. Right. He needs a team. Right. Mm -hmm. The team concept. It's a team concept. And, 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 and I think the other, <laughs> other thing, they make a mistake. They try to do it alone. Oh, no. See? And they say, well, I'm in business, you know. Well, hey, you can't be in business unless you know all the parameters that it takes to be successful mm -hmm. in that business. Yeah. You can't do it by yourself. You don't have the contacts. Right. Well, one of the most successful businesses here in the Washington, D.C. area is a company that you're familiar with, Smoot Corporation. They were partners in the uh, building of the African American Museum, mm -hmm. uh, Clark Smoot Russell. Oh yeah, Clark. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, I and think they, right. And, and Smoot was also a teaming partner with Clark on the stadium in D.C. and with the convention center in D.C. Mm -hmm. uh, Smoot Gilbain is currently building the uh, Martin Luther King Library in D.C. Mm -hmm. Smoot Gilbain built uh, Dunbar High School right. a couple of years in D.C. They built right. Roosevelt. Uh, and this is all with um, th yeah. this is all with no ten projects. years I'm talking about right. Right. project. But one of the things that Lewis Smoot said to me, he said, he said they put out thirteen proposals a month just to win one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, so. and 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 what you're saying is so very important. Speaking and writing is very important. Absolutely. Uh, uh, you, you have to know how to make the proposal and you have to speak well. A lot of youngsters, they're not able to uh, oh, yeah. put the verbs together, you know. You know, you have, uh, you have and, to, and, and, that's right. Uh, they figure that's automatic, you know. No. They use the different slangs like I'm good and all of that kind of stuff. See, that, that's not a business slang, see. No way. You, you know no. what I mean? Because if you, if you put together a good proposal, Right. And now you have to go in to make an oral presentation. Right, oral. That's, That's right. it. That's right. You, you're putting together this good proposal to get shortlisted. Right. And to get shortlisted means that you and three other firms are going to make an oral presentation. And to get in front of that team of folk and be impressive, then you have to, in and, fact, and be impressive. And just like you say, the money in this area, you have to look at it's, That's right. It's government. That's right. Uh, that, that's what I tell everyone. A government doesn't make anything. Mm -hmm. They contract everything. That's right. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. they, it may be government owned and all of that, but the contract, the private contractor, actually does the work. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it, you know what I mean? You, you and I, we, we know a, uh, a very successful business guy that came out of the city of Glen Arden. Steve Neal. Neal. That's right. He owns the international dealership on Kenilworth Avenue. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. Uh -huh. From Glen Arden. From Glen Arden. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Sell international buses and trucks and mm -hmm. that type of thing. Oh, right. international yeah. buses. Yeah. And that's trucks. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From Glen yeah. Arden. Yes, indeed. Great. Yeah. Steve, uh, very successful. And, and guy see, uh, uh, getting contracts and things like that. Absolutely. That's right. And that's one of the, that's one of the clients that we are working with right, we're working with right now and working to. To, to get him more inclusive into uh, on on in terms of what GSA buys, right? Mm -hmm. Right, You're exactly. Right. Be because that's that's future. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know what I mean? Those are, you, you know before we leave, I, I just want to uh, mention the fact that you uh, you know you've been involved in community with the uh, Glen on uh, Track Club. Oh, absolutely. And, and uh, yeah. uh, tell us a little bit about that. We don't have a yeah. uh, long. You know, tell, you know the, I remember. The involvement and how the, it's a number one club in the region. I'm not talking oh, about. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's the number one club in the country. Right. That's right, yeah. Right. Oh, no, back in 1979 when I was sitting on the city council in Glen Arden, uh, and uh, uh, Mr. Colbert 
and uh, uh, Henry McCallum and, and others, Melvin Ford was beginning that, that track club. Right. Uh, we were, uh, I was able to in fact uh, be of assistance to them way back then. Mm -hmm. And when I became mayor of the city of Glen Arden, we, we continued to, to push yes, and push right. to be. Right. And uh, uh, my, my youngest child uh, uh, went through the Glen Arden Track Club. When she came out of uh, mm -hmm. high school, she had four track scholarships. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's, that's right. the thing people don't understand. That, oh, yeah, that, that, right. that track club was oh, national. That, it was on a that's national that's level, right. yeah, and, they, and, and they gave and out they the, put those out, scholarships. That's right, more college scouts, yeah. and those come there for those kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, 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 they, they start off the mm -hmm. year in March with okay. 300 kids. Okay, uh, quickly, tell us more about your organization, this um, um, uh, Mid-Atlantic Minority Business. Minority Business? Yeah, your Minority Business and where you're located. Yeah, we, oh, we, we have How do people... Uh, they want to contact you. You know, you can yeah. be uh, involved in in uh, the business world. Oh yeah, yeah. My email address is d smith mm -hmm. at mbda mm -hmm. business center. Yeah. Okay. Uh, mbdabc dash mm -hmm. cr dot com. And, and, and wh what are the requirements? Uh, 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 we, we work we work with, with with businesses of a certain size. They have to be at least a million dollars in gross receipts. A million dollars. Right, a million dollars in gross, in gross receipts. receipts. Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I right, see. Yeah. Now, Otherwise, we'll refer them to the Small Business Development Center at the and University this is of associated, Maryland. Associated with the state and the federal government. No, this is associated government. with the federal government, the U.S. Department this of Commerce. This federal program. Yeah, it's a federal grant that they, they have 34 business centers around the country. Uh -huh. I'm the project director of their business center here in the Washington, D.C. area. Oh, congratulations. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Their and business uh -huh. center. And uh, that's. You're located both in, in Prince George Prince County? And no, in Silver Spring and in, in Arlington, Virginia. In Arlington, Virginia? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Silver Spring and Arlington, and Virginia. And Arlington, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. now uh, give us some advice a young person who want to get into business. Uh, how do they prepare this stuff quickly? Oh, I, you know, give me a call. I'll, I'll give you my number right here. It's 301-245-0690. Mm. Um, no. uh, mm. Okay. okay. Right. Well, just give me a uh, young person who want to get into business. How, how should they prepare themselves? First, first, you prepare yourself with the trade in which you want to get involved with. Mm. Right, that's one way to go into it. It's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a cookie-cutter situation. Mm. You can go into it a couple of different ways. Okay. But one of them is, is, uh, is to involve yourself in your trade and to, in fact, develop that, learn that thoroughly. That's right. Another way is to be on, on one of those complementary, complementary areas that I say you can be an attorney and, in fact, um, run yourself an IT firm. Mm -hmm. You can be a, 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 a CPA and run yourself an, a, 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 an IT firm or whatever, mm -hmm. because one of the things that you, can, you do, you'll go out and you can, you can purchase the talent mm -hmm. right, to, in fact, do that. So, yeah, so it's not any one way to kind of go into business. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to have a strong commitment. I would say to you, don't make yourself house poor. Mm -hmm. Don't make yourself, uh, don't go out and buy. If you're a young person, don't go out and, and, and over and keep, keep your credit good. Uh, uh, have yourself more than one source of income. Mm -hmm. And build yourself slowly. Okay. Connect yourself with people. Okay, you heard it from Dennis Smith, former mayor, Glen Arden, and I mean, he's out there working with the youngsters and everything. That Glen Arden Club is something else. And I want to commend you for all the time and efforts that you put into uh, Glen Arden. Congratulations. That's right. I appreciate it. Okay. Appreciate it. Right.